Over the past 20 years, scores of communities have faced the closing or realignment of local military facilities. For some communities, the impact was sudden and severe, resulting in the loss of jobs and economic activity. Yet by partnering with the military departments, many communities were able to turn those initial losses into big successes. This program visits a handful of these communities and the local leaders who help them build bright new futures. We were a Navy town. We had been a Navy town for over 60, 70 years. Losing uh, almost 4,000 jobs in the shipyard, I mean, that had an economic impact of a million dollars a day for us. It was a real shock to us, and uh, I was angry. Uh, I felt that how could they do this? My first thought is, my God, we're going to be faced with having a closed military facility with weeds five feet tall and boarded up buildings and fenced and what a detriment to the community. When this base was active, uh, there was total civilian and military personnel of upwards of 10,000 and the local community was about 2,000 in limestone. Uh, as I understand it, uh, this base uh, pumped about $40 million into the local economy one way or the other, either through purchases or employment. So when this all emptied out, it was a just a big vacuum, <laughs> big sucking sound. Fort Ord had been uh, the centerpiece of the entire Monterey Peninsula for many years. At the time of the closure, it was about at 35,000 people. So in an area of about 125,000, you can see it was about a third, a fourth of the population that we had. Well, the military in the state of Florida has always been very, very important. And here in our community, uh, it certainly was significant. I mean, it was where every new recruit came for their training, their basic training. When that list came out, through that BRAC process, so we were indeed concerned in the beginning. What you find when a base closes is you find a lot of empty buildings, a lot of empty housing, and not enough people to fill the buildings and the housing. It had been mentioned for closure at least 11 times before, and the local populace really wasn't too concerned about it being on the 93 list because they had weathered all these others and thought that, uh, well, it's never going to happen to us, but it did. All communities that face the closing or realignment of a military facility feel the same initial doubts and fears. Successful communities overcome those obstacles and go on to promising futures by first finding the right leadership. We work very, very strongly to try to keep the uh, base here, but uh, when, when that all changed, when we were actually announced as a closure uh, base, the first thing we did was to try to then reorganize everybody into a different kind of configuration to deal with the closure. We were realists. We decided we, we, we had lost that particular battle, but we weren't going to lose the war. For it truly to be embraced by the community and owned by the community, you have to have many leaders involved. And that just doesn't mean, you know, heads of your chamber of commerce or your economic development organization or your major businesses and corporations or other elected leaders. It also means neighborhood leaders, special interest group leaders. The board got together and worked together from the beginning. Everybody on the board trusted each other's judgment and we were able to move forward very fast. Some base closures affect more than one local jurisdiction and it's up to the leaders in those jurisdictions to find common ground right from the start. There were two cities involved in the land 
uh, and in eventually occupying and developing the plan and the implementation. We met early on and began to work through those details for multi-jurisdictional involvement. And it, it worked. We were both very reasonable, and that's critical, because if that doesn't happen, then nothing happens. If the base happens to be in uh, several jurisdictions, get those folks together and form a, a team or an authority or some form of organization and be very clear that you are speaking with one voice. Creating opportunities requires vision and a plan for achieving it. Both begin with local leaders helping their communities decide what they want their future to be. The city has had to really look at itself and say, what are we going to be when we grow up? We set up a plan that turned out to be the three T's. We were going to emphasize tourism, international trade, because we have such a large port, and the emerging technology. We uh, determined uh, what we wanted our community to be like, and we determined that we would not take just any industry that came that wanted to come in. We would uh, hope that we could get industries that would be in line with our wishes for the community. We decided that it was very important to have a major university in this particular area. So we made sure that we took this opportunity and had enough of a, a chunk of land, 800 acres, dedicated to the California uh, University system. And we opened up the Monterey Bay University system here. Among the lessons these communities learned, none has been more important than how to put together the resources you have and find the financial and technical assistance you need. You have to make use of the available resources within the community. Uh, that can be people, it can be facilities, it can be uh, finances, uh, all combined to make a better project. Second is involve the entire community in the planning process so that you get buy-in from the whole community so they can all help and have a piece of the success of the redevelopment when it occurs. The first thing to, to realize is you're not alone. There are very effective and numerous resources that are available to a community. We got EDA uh, loans, we got bridge loans, we got all kinds of support from the Office of Economic Adjustment. Department of Commerce was wonderful. In the end, it is leadership that enables a community to see the opportunities that a BRAC offers, develop a vision, and work together to achieve it. You have to have a vision of where you want to go, and you have to bring people along and people with you in that vision, because if you don't know where you're going, you won't know how to get there. But if you have a direction that people buy into, that people like, and that you sell this, Take that bold step. Put together the very best people, the very best minds who have the expertise and the knowledge uh, to come up with a plan and a vision uh, that will work and that you can deliver in the end. Identify leadership that is forward-thinking, business-minded, strong enough to withstand uh, short-term political pressure uh, in favor of the long-term economic goal that are set out. There's always going to be those who say it can't be done. But if you stay focused and you believe and have that passion in what you know you can bring about, it will happen.